Okay, everybody, let's try and animate a rocket. We're going to actually start off over here in SketchUp and talk to you about some of the rockets that you've made that had textures already applied. We did figure out how to get rid of them by going to the paint bucket and choosing the in model textures. The materials that have been used in the model, you can see that this rough metal is one of the things that Billy Witcher, this is his rocket, um, had experimented with and so we're going to delete them from the actual rocket so that they cannot be included when it goes over to Blender. Now you may see all of these and wonder about them. This is of course as it says Sophie's hair and her shirt. So these were the textures that were on the lady that was there at the very beginning when we started. So they're in there by default. So just in case any of them was used on the rocket and then removed We'll make sure there are no textures or colors in our model. The other thing to be really certain of is that everything is grouped together. So these things will come in as separate different pieces into Blender, but we want to make sure that we can move everything as a group if possible. So let's go ahead and make a group out of it. That also we can select everything, right click and make a group. So select everything, control A make a group and if the blue cube here, the prism is around just the rocket, you know there weren't any stray pieces anywhere else. If you end up with something bigger than this, you might find that there's something out there that you really didn't want to include in your blender. So let's go ahead and export this as a 3D model using the default Colada file DAE. I tend to like to add the letters DAE to my rocket to be absolutely sure that I've understand which file is which. So I'm going to make this my DAE Colada file and close. I won't save the change. Yeah, I'll go ahead and save the changes. I shouldn't have to do that again, hopefully. So let's go ahead and open up in Blender. So first we're going to get rid of the cube. And notice here's the camera. If you right click on it, it's looking at our stage here. We're going to import the rocket. So you have to navigate to the Big Bertha rocket and there it is DAE. So there is his rocket. I can right click on it and if I try and move, oh I got bits and parts. So that's one of the reasons we are not going to try moving the entire rocket. If you're trying to select the rocket you can see up here in the upper left hand corner we've got SketchUp and this has all the different groups that make up the rocket. If you select that then yes, you can move the entire thing. And that's going to be important because even though we aren't going to do much moving, we are going to rotate it. So let's go ahead and do some of our setup. First of all, if we had a render, you can see we have very dark shadows. So the first thing we're going to do is go to our global and add our environmental lighting. Too bright off the bat at one, so we're going to lower that down to a smaller number so that we get some nice detail in the shadows. The other thing is the transparency. So again, going back to our render, scrolling down to shading. Ray tracing alpha should not be a gray sky, but should be transparent. Once you do that, you've got transparency. Very important for our Premiere project. So let's take a look now, escape out of here, and move our camera. Now it is possible to move the camera around this way, um, but it's very hard to control just what it is that we're looking at a lot of times. So the control alt zero on the number pad method seems to be working pretty well. So I'm going to go ahead and zoom in, use my shift middle mouse wheel to pan, and I'm going to get just above the rocket. Let me hit control alt zero and you can see that I'm a little higher. I've been using the middle mouse wheel to get out of here and you can see that our camera is pointed right above the rocket. Now this might be a time when I might want to go ahead and lower it down, do a quick render, oh, too far. So you can tweak it, but it's hard to get perfect control. All right, so that looks pretty good for a starting point for our animation. If we go back to our render here, you will see that we've got a number of settings here for the resolution. We're going to keep those the same. We are going to render at 50% until we're ready to do the final thing so that we get uh, quick renders for our testing purposes. Next thing is that we've got the end frame. If we're going to do a 30 second video, 
we're going to need to replace 251 with 30 frames times 30 seconds is 900 frames. We're also going to change the frame rate to 2997 so that we've got that 30 frames per second. It's what we're used to working with in Blend, I mean in After Effects as well as Premiere. So let's give a start to animating our camera. First of all, we're going to say we're at the zero frame. Go to animation and insert a keyframe. Make sure you've got the camera selected, not the rocket. And insert a keyframe for location as well as rotation. Because as our camera moves, we're going to be pointing up at it. So we have to rotate the camera view. So let's go to the 60 frame mark. That's two seconds. And we can move our camera down. and move it out. But then what are we seeing? If I hit F12, where is the camera? Oh, I didn't keyframe it. Ah, let's set our keyframes. So I'm going to use the other method that I prefer, which is Control Alt 0. So we're going to want to see the entire fin assembly. So I'm going to escape out of this by middle mouse wheel and scroll around. Zoom out a little bit and try another shot. So here we go, we're going to be able to see the whole rocket. We're at two seconds, and there's our camera. Let's set a keyframe for that position. Insert a keyframe on the camera for location as well as rotation. So you can see the camera is going to be towards the top, and it's going to zoom out and down. So let's take a look now and go to 120 seconds. And we're going to zoom out a little bit so we can see the whole rocket like that. Maybe have it a little bit higher in our point of view. So let's get out of there. Shift, middle mouse wheel to pan upwards. There we go. So after another two seconds, the rocket's going to be right about there. Inserting a keyframe. Oh, let me get out. You can see the camera went further away, so we'll be able to see the whole rocket. Inserting a keyframe for location and rotation. Coming down. So if I hit F12, you can see the animation. It's going to be there, and we'll let it sit there for just a little bit. So I'm going to go to 180 and just rotate the camera maybe a little bit. Hitting Escape. If you hold down the zero on the number pad, it actually goes to your camera view. Okay, so there we are. Let's move out and we'll have the camera go down maybe a little bit more. So that means shift and panning the rocket up, control alt zero. So it's going to be blasting through the atmosphere, inserting a keyframe for location and rotation. Okay, so now I'm going to actually zoom out so I can see the entire 90 frames. You can see this is all happening in the first little bit. And then we're going to jump to our midpoint, which is 450. And we're going to get a very different angle. We're going to have the rocket be further away. And we're going to have it pointing away from us. Control Alt Zero, moving the camera. Okay, I think I want it to be more towards the top. So I'm going to shift middle mouse wheel and pan it up. Control Alt Zero. So the rocket in the first half of the video has blasted up and then out and away from us. So let's insert a keyframe for the location and rotation of our camera. And so now what we can do is over the next part is we'll drift back towards the rocket. We'll be in space by then. We'll be seeing the stars and let's get close to our rocket again. So I'm going to zoom back in. Use my shift middle mouse wheel to do some panning and get a good kind of final position for the rocket. Right about there, maybe down a little bit further. Okay, let's get out of that. Okay, so we'll be able to see the rocket again and it will be in the star field by then. 
So let's insert our final keyframe for our camera, location and rotation. Let me exit out of this. Go over here to the side so you can really see as I scrub through here what happens. So it goes farther away, zooms out, and then we're going to drift back up towards it. Okay, the other thing I want to do is have the rocket do some spinning. So I'm going to get a closer view here. I'm not going to change my camera angle, just my view. I'm going to click on the cube. And the cube, if I've got my SketchUp model here, if I change the rotation of Z, the whole rocket spins around. And so I'm going to go back to the zero point and set a keyframe on the rocket for its original position. Insert the rotation of the rocket. I don't have to do the position because the camera isn't really moving. I'm going to try this out here. So over the first half of the video, I'm going to have the rocket do a full 360 rotation. And then, oh, I've got to insert my keyframe for rotation on the rocket. Doesn't seem to have taken. Let me see. Oh, 360. Insert keyframe for rotation. So now as I scrub through here, over the first part, it's going to be rotating as our camera is doing its move. And then as we drift back towards it, it's in space. So let's just have it go back to 270. So it's going to go backwards a 90 degree twist. So let's see what that looks like. It's going to scrub and then once it's in space, oh, I forgot to set the keyframe. So. 270, insert a keyframe on the rocket for the rotation. So it's going to go faster as it's blasting off, and then it's going to drift back slowly in this direction. Maybe we'd want to add another 90 degrees, you decide, but I like the idea of it engine cutting out about here, and then it's doing a much slower rotation. Okay, so now we render this out. And we do that by going back to the camera, Got 90 frames to render. Remember, we're going to do it at 50% to make it go quicker until we get everything set, the colors of the rocket, the smoke, the flame. But for this, for our tests, we can do it at 50%. Thing to change here is the temp folder. Very important to have a place to render these. So go to the D drive in your period folder and make a new directory each time you're going to render these out. 15, 0126 test rocket render. Make sure you go into the directory that you make, click accept, and then to begin rendering out the animation, instead of pressing F12 to see what it looks like at any given point, still a good idea. Looks like it goes out of range. Oh, that's not going to be good. Might have to make some adjustments. This is a good thing to check in here and see what happens. Right here, this camera position is not so good. We don't get to see it again until there. So I think what we need to do is go back into our animation. Hold down. Let's see. Where's the camera? Way down there. Go down to our camera position at this mark. Hmm. It's hard to tell what's happening. I think it's just gotten a little out of whack. So I'm going to say, what does this look like? And it's going to come back into the scene at this point. If I insert, make sure you go back to camera, insert a keyframe from location and rotation. So let's take a look. It's going to go up, up, up. It's rotating. We catch up with it. And it starts making its turn. Or at least it stays in the shot. This is not the best. But let's give it a try. I'm going to go to animation and Get out of this, hit animation, render, and it will begin rendering out our rocket. 